It's no surprise that prop firms are all the rage right now. I mean, they're literally giving you money to trade with if you are good enough. So in this video, I'm going to show you exactly how to pass your first evaluation in as little time as possible. Now you might be saying to yourself, Z, I didn't know that you traded prop. That's correct. Historically, I've always traded my personal account. But with the meteoric rise in prop firms, I was getting a lot of questions and I couldn't speak from firsthand information. So I decided to take the plunge. I passed my first evaluation on my first try with Top Step, as you can see here. This is my evaluation account and I passed it in eight days hitting the threshold of $53,000 on a 53k account more on that later and now if I drop this down you can see that I'm currently a funded trader with top step I only have one account and I ran this account from zero to almost four thousand dollars in a few days so not only am I going to show you from my perspective what is the best way to pass your first evaluation we're going to be talking about the pros and cons of prop trading in comparison to personal account trading exactly how to conduct optimal risk management so that you can pass your evaluations and and go on to succeed in your funded account. And finally, I'm gonna go over briefly what type of strategy I personally used in order to do this. Although trust me, strategy is not as important as risk management and you'll see why. And towards the end of the video, I have a major surprise for you that I'm going to be giving you absolutely free that will help you pass your evaluations and continue to succeed as a funded trader. Everything will be timestamped in the chapters below. Let's get right into it. All right, so at first I dismissed the idea of prop trading as some sort of fad. But after I took the plunge and passed my first evaluation on my first try, I have a newfound respect for it. And I think it definitely has a place in our trading niche. Here are the pros versus personal account trading. Number one, it is gamified. It forces you to stay within strict parameters and there are consequences of losing your entire account if you don't. Now, for me, I've been trading my personal account for over 15 years. And after it has been built up over time, it is very easy to lose sight of what it really means to lose or win on a daily basis. I'm not really trading within a specific goal. My goal is just to be profitable by the end of the year. So if I make 5k one day or I lose 5k one day, it really doesn't have any material effect on my overall portfolio. With the personal account, it's very easy to take the amount that's in there for granted, especially if you've been trading for a long time and you've built up a good sum. There simply is no urgency to perform in the same way as a prop account. Number two, and this is probably the main reason for most people is access to capital. This is amazing. Joining a prop firm provides traders with access to capital that they might not otherwise have, allowing them to trade things like futures, allowing them to take bigger position sizes and make thousands of dollars using somebody else's money. Number three is reduced financial risk because you are trading with somebody else's money. And really the upfront cost is the cost of onboarding, which we will get into in a second. Traders are not risking their own capital, thereby reducing their financial financial risk. Number four, you can treat it like a business. Since you are essentially a 1099 contractor, you can write off anything that has to do with the pursuit of trading knowledge or trading education. So if you buy books on trading, if you join masterminds on trading, etc., that kind of stuff you can write off because you are a contractor that is working independently as an independent contractor for the prop firm. You are given a 1099 at the end of the year. Now, I'm not an accountant, so check with your accountant to make sure that you can write certain things off. Off. Number five, copying accounts. Once you get really good and you pass multiple evaluations, you could take the same trade among multiple accounts at the same time. Thereby, if you make a gain, you can increase the amount in each of those accounts simultaneously. All right, now here are the cons. Number one is profit sharing. Like I said, prop firms do have different structures, but there is some sort of profit sharing baked in. So on top step, for instance, the first $10,000 are yours to keep. Everything after 10,000, you're going to be splitting 90-10 with the prop firm, you taking 90%, obviously, and them taking 10%. Number two, restricted market access. Some prop firms limit the types of instruments that you can trade, and you are not free to trade in the same way as if you had a personal account. But whether you are trading a Forex-based prop firm or a futures-based prop firm, most of these products are most of what you would trade anyway on a personal account. Number three con is a restricted time window. Because most prop firms are set up to test your day trading skills, you cannot hold positions overnight, and you will have to close them by market 
close that day. Now you can usually reopen the position in the after hours. However, you cannot contiguously hold a position overnight. And if you don't close it, they will likely close it for you. Number four, and this is a big deal if you're in the US and you are trading a futures-based prop firm, you lose the tax advantages of trading futures. One of the beauties of trading futures is that it is taxed at a 60-40 rate, meaning only 40% of it is taxed as short-term capital gains and 60% of it is taxed as long-term capital gains, even for a day trade. You definitely lose that tax advantage. And as I said, you will be getting a 1099 at the end of the year if you made money. And that 1099 will be considered income just like as if you were an independent contractor doing anything else. So you will be taxed at your tax bracket without that futures tax advantage. All right, now that we got the pros and cons out of the way, how do you actually pass? Well, the secret is in risk management, which honestly should be no secret at all. But let's go over an example of what is required to pass on a top step trading combine with a $50,000 account. Now you can opt for a $50,000, $100,000 or a $150,000 account. And obviously the bigger the size of the account, the bigger the profit target is, but also the bigger the max loss limit is. If you are just starting out, my suggestion is to go with the $50,000 account. Now you can see here that you are allowed five contracts as a max, more on that in a second, and your profit target is 6%, meaning you have to get to $53,000 in order to pass this trading combine or this evaluation and get funded. Now your max loss limit is 2000. So you cannot go below $48,000 or you lose this account. This is what I was talking about with gamified trading. So that's it. All you have to make is 6% without blowing your account and blowing your account in this case means that if your account gets below $48,000 on this 50K account. All right, so you have a 50K account and the goal is to get to a 53K account right? As we said, that is 6%. So we're going to be splitting this up into three sections. Now, the first section is going to be your risk averse section, okay? In this phase here, you do not want to risk more than 1% of your account, meaning more than $500 of this 50K. Because remember, if you get to $48,000, obviously every prop firm has different stipulations, but they're all very similar. If you get to this, you lose your account. So we do not want to draw down to that 48,000. That means we need to use a very risk averse strategy, utilizing most likely not more than one contract, even though they allow you five, and you don't want to use more than 1% of the account. Meaning if you take a trade, your max loss on that trade should not be more than $500. Now we want to stick to at least two to one R trades. That means if we are risking $500, we are going to be making a thousand bucks on this trade. And that is the minimum. If you are really good, obviously you are going to be aiming for three R. Four R is a little unrealistic, but can happen. But our goal is to stick to two to one R with a one contract maximum and a maximum loss per trade of $500 or 1% because this allows you to essentially lose four trades. You would have to get four trades at max loss before you hit this $48,000. Now, the second phase I call money in the bank, M-I-B for short, okay? Money in the bank. Why is that? Because after you hit a 2% mark, meaning after your account is now gone from 50,000 to 51,000. So here, let's just say your account is at 50,000, which is what you start with. And here money in the bank phase starts when you are 2% up at 51,000. Why is that? Because when you are up 2%, now you can take slightly a little bit more risk in order to get to the third phase faster. Here is where you could potentially use two contracts. Now, I'm assuming that you guys know what I mean when I say contracts, right? We're talking about futures contracts here. And I'm assuming that everybody's using ES, which is the S&P 500 mini futures contract or NQ, which is the mini NASDAQ futures contract. We're not talking about MES or MNQ. I personally don't think that you even need to touch that when we're talking about these amounts and these types of accounts. I think that you can pass with trading a regular one contract basis when we're in the first risk averse stage. And once we get to 
the money in the bank stage, you can trade one to two contracts. So again, we're just assuming ES, NQ, uh, maybe RTY, or if you're a crude oil trader, CL. Once we get to the end of the video and we get to the freebie that I have for you, we'll talk about all of the things that I've traded in order to pass my valuation and get funded and what I continue to trade in my funded account. Now, in this stage, as I said, the money in the bank stage, in my view, you can risk 500 to 1,000 per contract on the first trade after you hit that 51,000 mark. On the first trade, you can risk 500 to 1,000 per contract, right? Now, if you say you lose your trade and now your account is back to 50,000 or 49,000, you are going to go back to the risk averse stage and only risk 500 per contract and a one contract maximum. But in the money in the bank stage, you can increase your risk a little bit more because you have a little bit more to play with. So one to two contracts, in my view, 500 to 1,000 per contract. Again, the next stage, we are going to talk about the strategy that I use to get there, but risk management is way more important than strategy. If you you can utilize this type of risk management, you can use an array of strategies. There isn't one strategy that's going to get you there. Now, the third phase for all of you poker players, this is going to make sense. This is going to be called the bubble. So uh, we go from 50 to 51,000, we gain 2%. Now we go from 51,000, say that you hit that 52,000 mark. We are going to be calling this the bubble. If you're a poker player, you know exactly why. The bubble is basically when there are only a few players left in order to get to the final round or the final table, depending on how big the game is. But basically there's a cutoff. Anyone that is within that cutoff is going to get paid in the poker tournament, depending on their place, right? It's, it's just a cutoff for a paid place. So in this concept here, you are basically very close to passing and you don't wanna do anything reckless. This is why I like to personally take risks in the second phase of the evaluation and not in the last phase. A lot of people think once you get close, you could take bigger risk. No, if I'm here and say now my account is at $52,000 and I just need one more thousand to pass, I do not want to make stupid risks here. I don't want to increase the risk. I don't want to take mistakes. I want to allow myself as much leeway as possible in order to take a small base hit to get me over the line from 52,000 to 53,000 so that I can pass that account. So hopefully that makes sense. That is what I think is effective. So when you were at this stage, the bubble, you you want to drop back down and play minimal contracts. So this will look very close to the first stage, the risk averse stage, where we are going to drop back down to a one contract maximum, whether you're trading ES, NQ, CL, GC, et cetera, and you are not going to risk more than 500 per trade. Also, once I get to this bubble stage, I'm not going back to the money in the bank stage, right? Once I get to the bubble stage, I stick to this until I actually pass the evaluation. So hopefully that makes sense from a risk management standpoint. It's honestly not rocket science trying to get from 50 to 53K, or even if you chose the 100K account on this top step combine, the goal is still 6%. Some prop firms do 8%, but the concept is the same. All right, let me put away my toys real quick. Now, in terms of strategy, as I said before, strategy is going to vary from person to person and risk management is more important than strategy. But I will tell you how I personally passed my evaluation and how I continue to trade my funded account. My trading has really shifted over the years and I've included a lot of SMC, which is smart money concepts or ICT strategies into my trading. So for instance, this trade that I took on Friday, which was just a couple of days ago from the day of this recording, it was a pretty simple trade, waited for liquidity to be taken, waited for for market structure to be broken. And then once we re-entered into a point of interest, that is when I took it long. And as you can see here, I netted $420 per contract on this trade. Now, remember back to the risk management, if you're doing an evaluation and you stuck to one contract on, on RTY and you were in the first phase, the risk averse phase, you were already halfway towards that first phase or somewhere around there. You could see here another trade that I took just a few days before that, again, came into an area of major liquidity, broke structure, retraced into a point of interest, and then took this long. This was $500 per contract. This was on ES, the S&P 500 mini. These are very deliberate trades, at least two to one. Some of these, we got even three to one on them. So we're not even risking that much to gain this $500 per contract. I think my max loss on here was 250. So even way less than the maximum threshold that we just discussed when we were talking about risk management. Here's another trade on the Russell 2000. 
same concept. It's, it's really the same thing over and over again. It's actually a very easy strategy. Wait for liquidity, wait for market structure to be broken, come back into a point of interest. You can use a fair value gap or Fibonacci or an order block or whatever moves you, honestly. Like that's what I use, but I know people that use moving average crossovers and VWAP and all this stuff, but the concept is the same, right? A major area of liquidity has been taken, a break of market structure from bearish to bullish or bullish to bearish, et cetera. And then you are waiting for a retracement back down before taking that contract long if market structure shifted to bullish or short if market structure went from bullish to bearish. Obviously, you can join us in the Traveling Trader Academy when we open back up to the public. Right now, we are wait list only, but we even have a prop trading chat channel where we help people pass their evaluations. Not only that, but you will actually get access to my day trades as well as the other analyst day trades, which are 99% of the time futures. So if you are trading a prop account, can apply to your evaluations and your funded accounts. And I said that I had a surprise for you. So here it is. I'm going to be giving you this PDF that I put together, literally every single trade that I took to get funded on that top step account. You can see everything that I traded. I traded NASDAQ crude oil, the S&P 500, the Russell 2000. I traded gold and the 10 year futures. You can see every single trade that I took here, full transparency, showing you how I passed that account. I'm going to be giving that to you. Link is in the description for the free PDF. So make sure you hit up that link in the description, get that free PDF. You have nothing to lose and hopefully it helps you on your funded journeys. Let me know in the comment section below if you have any questions. I'll try to answer every question as much as possible. Hit that thumbs up if you got anything out of this video. If you want to check out Top Step, which in my opinion is the best futures prop trading firm, I think there's a link below for 70% or something off of your first evaluation account. I think it'll come out to like 49 bucks or something. And if you pass it and you get to that 6% threshold, so from 50,000 to 53,000, for instance, they will give you a funded account. The first 10,000 of which is all yours. And then after that, you will split it with them 90-10. But you get access to capital that you might otherwise not have or that you don't want to use. Subscribe to the channel, hit that notification bell, stay safe out there traders. Peace.